Today's show is sponsored by Cumulo. Cumulo makes managing file data at massive scale radically simple. File data is at the center of the human experience. It transforms genomic research into drug therapies, factory logs into machine learning, LIDAR images into maps, and video into entertainment. File data is the currency exchanged in digital classrooms and labs, advancing knowledge and research around the world. Freeing users and the applications that depend on vast amounts of file data is what Cumulo lives for. As the world goes digital, with unstructured file data driving human experiences from movies to new vaccines, Cumulo makes it simple for you to store, manage, and create with file data at massive scale, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. Experience Cumulo's file data platform for free today. Cumulo.com slash cloudcast. That's Q-U-M-U-L-O dot com slash cloudcast. And try it with your data today. Cloudcast Media presents from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delb and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive Cloudcast studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hope everybody is doing well. We are coming up on, you know, give or take a day, basically the, the one year anniversary of when. Uh, Kind of COVID became top of mind for everybody, uh, you know, kind of shut down things all over the world. Well, at least here in the United States, I know other parts of the world had uh, begun shutting down maybe even a month or a month and a half ahead of this. But, uh, you know, it's been a year. We've been living with this for a year. And hopefully everybody, everybody is, uh, you know, taking care of each other, taking care of friends and family and uh, taking care of yourselves, doing what you got to do to, uh, you know, just get through each day. Hopefully you're uh, coming up and close to getting a chance to get the vaccination. I know that's rolling out more and more. So good to hear that, uh, that beginning to roll out. So today we're going to talk about edge computing. So this is a uh, Sunday perspective show. So this is one where we really kind of dive a little bit uh, into another topic that uh, we're not doing the interviews. We're kind of kind of trying to give some broader perspective on a, on a segment of the industry. And, you know, Aaron and I have covered edge computing quite a bit, uh, you know, just various shows here and there, um, you know, kind of different perspectives on it. And one of the things that comes back all the time that we get feedback from from different listeners is they'll say, well, you know, I, I hear this and I hear that about it, edge computing and, you know, I hear that it's growing and it's going to be a big deal, but it, it seems like... I don't hear consistency. It seems complicated, and you know that's a very fair uh, bit of feedback. So, you know, today we're gonna we're gonna kind of dive into what's making edge computing complicated. Uh, you know, I mean, it seems like it should just be smaller computers doing limited tasks. So, why is it so hard? Why is it so complicated? Why, you know, why do we hear of, of so many different ways of doing edge computing? So, we're gonna get to that after the break. Today's show is sponsored by CBT Nuggets. We know that Cloudcast listeners are curious about technologies. But how are you really learning to master the technologies needed to be a cloud expert? You know, when Aaron and I got started, we had to buy books, set up labs, find experts, and then hope something didn't crash. CBT Nuggets makes it easy to either get hands-on skills or get certified with the latest cloud technologies. Whether it's AWS, Azure, cloud automation, security, or app dev, CBT Nuggets has you covered. What I really liked about CBT Nuggets is the online instructors are both knowledgeable and they keep it interesting. Their courses have built-in test questions, virtual coaching to help plan your certification path, and I can always jump into a virtual lab to get hands-on at any time. Check it out at cbtnuggets.com slash cloudcast to sign up for a free learner account. This unlocks tons of great training, and you'll be entered into a drawing for a free six-month premium subscription. That's cbtnuggets.com slash cloudcast. And we're back here on the Sunday Perspective Show, and we're going to, as we mentioned before the break, we're going to dive into sort of the complexities of edge computing. So I tried to break this down into to a few sort of manageable chunks as to how we're going to talk about and organize the thoughts around this. So, you know, the first thing that I find, and I get a chance to talk to a lot of different companies about edge computing, um, and one of the things I find is that one of the areas that'll make it kind of complicated and that you really kind of have to pry into and dig into and ask a lot of other questions is, you know, what do you mean by edge computing and and where is your edge? What edges are we talking about? Because it really can have a lot of different connotations. Um, you know, it could be, you know, what people used to call branch offices. So it could be a branch office of a bank, a branch office of a retail outlet, um, you know, anything that was sort of 
not headquarters, but out in a remote location. It could be an, an edge sales office, an edge insurance office, whatever that might be. Um, we used to call those branch offices, but now, you know, what goes on in those stores is is very different. Um, you know, it's not no longer just sort of like localized transactions or, you know, a localized agent. Sometimes it's kiosks, sometimes it's a very interesting video display. So there's a lot of different things going on there. But that's one area that you often hear as, uh, you know, edge for a company. The second thing is a couple of terms that I'll hear uh, banter around quite a bit, which is near edge and far edge. And near edge tends to be kind of a variation on that branch office idea. But, you know, it often means, um, you know, different types of kind of computing than we used to have, right? So it's, uh, you know, more more advanced computing in manufacturing facilities and factories and stuff like that. It could be you have a, a mobile vehicle. So let's say you're in the uh, uh, distribution business, you're in the transportation business, you now have much more computing capability, uh, Wi-Fi security capabilities on those moving vehicles, right? You have, uh, you know, cruise ships and uh, planes and, you know, military devices and all sorts of stuff like that. So, <clears throat> You know, you have quite a bit of those things. Sometimes those are considered uh, near edge for certain companies, but they're also considered far edge for other companies. So far edge tends to be, you know, further afield from where your central computing location is, tends to be smaller devices, uh, tends to be maybe it's a it's a telephone pole in a city, uh, it could be a lamppost, it could be on a windmill, it could be on a moving device, right? It could be a lot of different things. So, you know, just kind of the first thing trying to figure out from people, where is your edge? What do you call that thing? And what distinguishes it as a as that type of edge for a certain customer? Really, it's kind of a starting point that you got to figure out what they're trying to do, where it is, and then some of, what are the other ramifications and characteristics that go along with that edge. And the last thing I'll say is, um, not every edge, um, and this, this sounds like a weird thing in 2021, but not every edge is going to always be connected to the internet, right? There's going to be plenty of situations in which something is disconnected from the internet or it's not going to have consistent internet access. And we're gonna dive into that a little more in the networking section, but that's another kind of big edge consideration to really uh, take into, you know, as you're thinking about what does edge mean. So I'm gonna kind of go through <clears throat> three or four kind of big characteristics or areas in which, you know, Edge can seem complicated um, for things that you know you wouldn't normally think about when we talk about cloud computing, you know, in a, in a high bandwidth, always connected world where there's lots and lots of hardware options and all sorts of stuff like that. So, so one of the first things we really have to consider is the hardware characteristics of what's going on, the environment in which this computing is actually happening, and there are a lot of different things that can uh, factor into this this hardware uh, piece as to whether it's complicated or simplified. And you really kind of have to walk your way up the stack as to figuring out, um, you know, what are the big considerations and what are the things that are going to give you trade-offs and impact um, your ability to be successful, how you're going to work with ecosystems and so forth. So the first part of that is going to be uh, the OS that's going to run on the device. Is it a custom OS? Is it an embedded OS? Or is it more of what you'd call like a COTS or common off-the-shelf OS, right? So in most cases, this is going to be some variation of Linux. Um, but there are, you know, as many of you know, there are tons of variations of Linux to begin with. So there's, um, you know, embedded uh, Linux. There is, you know, just taking the upstream kind of free bits that you can get. There's all sorts of vendor variations on this, both kind of, you know, larger, but also immutable. Uh, we now we see in the container space. So there's a lot that you've got to understand from that. And that impacts not only the footprint of the hardware, uh, how much CPU it has to have, how much RAM it has to have, which all have cost implications, but also depending on how customized that OS is, it's going to get into some things about, you know, how does it handle security? How does the ecosystem work with this? Like, how can it be changed and updated and modified? What happens when there are bugs? So all those things really begin uh, with kind of the OS running on the, on the on the machine itself. The next thing that you're looking at is, are we talking about using general purpose hardware, or are we using specialized hardware, right? And again, this is an area where there is tons and tons of opportunity to go smaller and smaller, but also to use things like GPUs and NVMe and DPUs and other things, depending on the situation, right? And again, this is where, you know, you may say to yourself, well, you know, in the cloud, there are dozens and dozens of types. But again, you have some flexibility in the cloud, you can pick and choose them, you can move around them fairly easily. A choice you make for the edge is something that you're typically going to live with for a long, long period of time. Could be two years, could be three years, could be five years, could be 10 years. And so 
the thought process that goes into that and then the choices that are made have very, very big ramifications. And then the third thing I'll say is, you know, how many actual computing devices do you have there, right? And, you know, this may seem like a, you know, a no big deal, but, you know, when you're talking about the difference between like, I have three computing devices or do I have two, right? That starts to get into, or do I have one? That starts to make trade-offs of, well, what does high availability mean? Are you paying for high availability? If you can't, um, you know, if you have a high availability uh, mechanism that requires three nodes and you're only going to deploy two nodes for cost reasons, well, that's probably not going to work. You're going to have to look at something else. Am I only deploying one node? Does things like high availability not matter? So you really start to get into how much footprint do I have? How much available memory is there going to be for all the things that I'm going to need to do out there? How important are those things, right? And so, you know, a lot of those things come into play. How much local storage do you have? It's going to play into how much logs can you keep? How much monitoring can you do? How long will you keep data over a long period of time? How do you move that data off of those localized devices? So a lot of those things really come into play at a low level environment, hardware perspective that you got to take into consideration. <clears throat> okay, the next area we're going to look at is how networking can have a big impact in this. So the first thing that you've got to think about from a networking perspective is, are your devices going to be connected to the internet? Or are they going to be disconnected? And again, like I said, that may seem crazy in 2021. But you'd be surprised if you don't dig into this world, how often things aren't always connected. And there's a difference between sort of maybe proxy connected, partially connected, like they're online and they're offline and they're back online, or we are never, ever connected to the internet. And you really have to understand that because if you, if you misassume or you, you assume or incorrectly assume about this, um, it, it'll completely change the world that you're dealing with, uh, in terms of edge computing. Um, if they're disconnected, how are they handled? How does disconnected work? Is the expectation that there's going to be a bunch of localized services that run? Is it, um, you know, it, it's going to restrict the types of things that you can do? You have to really think about that stuff. And the next thing to really think about is how much bandwidth is going to be available. Because again, we're not talking about, um, again, it depends, right? If you're talking about maybe more near edge than far edge, there's probably going to be very big differences between how much bandwidth is available, right? Is the bandwidth synchronous, right? Is it is it same upstream and downstream, or is it asynchronous where it's, you know, more in one direction than the other? That's going to have a big impact on the types of applications, the data flows, the frequency of updates that you can provide. Like there's a lot of things that go on, even though maybe you're only serving a local Wi-Fi region or a local 5G region, but you have to understand things like the, the network backhaul and how do you get to it and how frequently available it's going to be and how much bandwidth there is. So it's another big area to think of. And then finally, you know, what are the traffic patterns of these applications look like? You know, how much of that is local? How much of it is sort of backhaul back to a centralized location or a cloud? How much of it is some sort of replication of a localized service and then backhaul? Um, you know, you really have to kind of understand what the traffic patterns look like. And you can't just assume that if I drop something out there that, that ran in a, in a near edge, that it's going to run great in far edge. So, you know, networking has a huge, huge impact on, uh, you know, the considerations for, you know, how do we make edge computing work? The third area we'll talk about is security. So obviously, again, security, huge issue. We're now talking about thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, millions of devices. Um, and oftentimes, you know, security may not be the first thought, right? We might be thinking about what does it cost to put a device out there? What does it cost to service that location? And security may come later in the thought process. So the first thing to question is, how does security happen on day zero? So I literally put a device out there. What, how secure is it? And this is an area where you may think, oh, well, um, we'll just turn all the security features on. And this is one of those things you have to take into consideration is that edge device sort of doing a, a broader purpose in which users won't directly interact with it? Or is it something that the users are going to have to have some interaction with? And I'll give you an example. One of the companies I used to work with, we used to uh, deploy these edge devices out into small, medium businesses. So basically, uh, any location that didn't have more than 10 actual employees be stuff like a barbershop, a hairdresser, uh, you know, it could be in a, a, a dentist's office. And the expectation was they didn't really have technicians. We built this cool technology to allow it to just kind of get dropped out there. But one of the things that we had to make a big decision on was it had Wi-Fi, right? We wanted to allow Wi-Fi in uh, with that device. And so the question was, 
Do we turn Wi-Fi on by default and leave the sort of security open so that anybody can connect to it? Or do we turn it off by default and turn security on such that somebody technically has to figure out how do we turn this thing back on and how do we put, you know, kind of a secure SSID with a password and everything. And this was a huge, huge discussion for us because it was like, are we trying to err on the side of simplicity, ease of use, get it up and running immediately? Or do we want to err on the side of, you know, secure by default and then open it up as needed? And this was... A very, very difficult conversation. So this is the type of thing you have to take into consideration is, you know, who's going to be using it? What's the applicability of it? And, you know, are we, what are we trying to take into consideration? We want to know about um, kind of how security, how is security going to be maintained? What happens when a new CVE comes along? Um, Are we talking about localized services? Are we talking about backend sort of security services? you know, what security services are going to be on this device, right? Can we afford to have a firewall? Can we afford to have a proxy, right? And afford might mean a software cost, but it could also just mean a CPU and memory thing, right? Do we have to encrypt anything on this device? All that sort of stuff needs to be taken into consideration, both from, do we have enough footprint to do it? How many CPU cycles does it have? What sort of licensing considerations do we have to have? All that kind of stuff. The next area that I really want to dig into, and this will be the final area, because again, I don't want to make this sound like it's unbelievably complicated, but these are all big areas to consider when we think about how do we make edge computing successful. And that last thing is going to be maintenance, right? How do we take care of these devices? How do we take care of these fleets? How do we take care of all these services that are out there? So the first thing that you've really got to consider is how much does it cost to deploy new edges, right? What's it cost to get things out there? And this is not just the cost of the equipment, the cost of software. This is, you know, having to roll out a truck and people, you know, kind of forget this because maybe you're used to putting things in a data center and you're going to rack and stack hundreds and hundreds of servers and they're all going to go in racks and they're all going to be consistent. But I'll, you know, I'll give you an example. I've done this job before where I had to deploy out to, you know, 150 different locations and I spent three and a half months in a truck in a van driving around to all these weird, weird remote locations where you were installing stuff, you know, in the same room where the coats were or the same room that was a toilet or, you know, in a dark thing that you couldn't find the internet connection or whatever it was. So, you know, the cost of rolling those things out can be expensive. Oftentimes it's three, four, five hundred dollars per truck roll. And if you don't get it right the first time, that's another three, four, five hundred dollars per truck roll. You may blow up your whole economic model on day one if you don't get it right and figure out how to do things properly, not have to roll out the truck so many times. The th- second thing is how often are you expecting things to be upgraded, right? How often are you going to touch these devices? The goal obviously would be, well, you know, anything we have to do, we'll do over the air. But again, you have to take that into consideration. But also you have to take into consideration things like, is the technology that I'm choosing going, you know, is it on a path that needs frequent updates, right? So this is a conversation, for example, that comes up all the time with Kubernetes. Kubernetes, if you, you know, maintain fairly, uh, good health with it comes out every three months now four months right and it allows for normal support of you know sort of n plus two so the main release plus two more releases back well you know let's put this into consideration if it comes out every three months that means every nine months um, you know if you don't keep up with it you've got to touch every device in your environment right so that could be a lot, a lot of time spent upgrading so you know you're looking at all these different technologies and how frequently they're upgraded how much bandwidth they take to upgrade, you know, can you do incremental changes? Can you do bits and pieces of that? All that stuff's got to be taken into consideration. Next thing to think about is how will maintenance happen? Is it done over the air, right? Is there enough bandwidth to be able to upgrade the things you want to do? What do you do if a, if a upgrade fails, right? Are you prepared to roll a truck out there? Is there some mechanism whereby it could just easily be, you know, flipped on and off and the system comes back to, to normal or something? So, you know, how do you deal with maintenance on an ongoing basis? Um, it has to do with technology, but it also has to do with cost. And then finally, how sophisticated, how much can you afford to have sort of day two ops built into the platform? Is it going to have telemetry? Is it going to have environmental things, right? Maybe it's an environment in which it needs to know how hot the device is going to be or how cold it's going to be or, you know, how close in proximity to something it needs to understand. Does it have to have those things built in? Is it going to have certain benchmarks so it understands that if it gets above or below certain CPU that it's going to do certain things, right? These are all really big, important things to think about in terms of, 
you know, how am I going to go about maintaining these things? So, you know, I really only talked about about four or five things there. Um, you know, the hardware, the different, you know, sort of the definitions that we had of edge, you know, understanding which edge we're talking about, what the environment, the computing environment looks like, and the associated storage that goes with it, the networking, the security, the maintenance. You know, we could talk for another hour plus about the different types of applications that are being out deployed out there, you know, whether it's you know, simple application, whether it's, you know, localized AI and ML, you know, um, computer vision, you know, could be digital twins, could be all these really cool things that people are doing out there on the edge. But again, those are things that are probably going to be pretty unique to your business. But the other parts you really have to take into consideration to make sure that you're getting the economics right, that you can maintain these environments, that they're not going to get hacked, um, and that, you know, you're going to get the end result that you ultimately want for your business. So hopefully that gives you some sense as you're learning more and more about edge computing, some of the things that are really great opportunities, uh, but also areas where you really got to do some thinking. Because again, edge computing is not something where you can just sort of, you know, blow it up as a virtual machine and restart another one two seconds later. You know, you got to think about what am I deploying? How big is it? Does it fit? How long does it take to get it out there? All these other kind of considerations that are, you know, very different than if you're thinking about a centralized data center. So or a centralized cloud. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. Uh, again, as always, love that everybody's given us feedback about the Sunday Perspectives, per- Sunday Perspectives show. Sorry about that. Um, and really appreciate everybody just continuing to uh, help us grow the community, whether it's telling a friend, whether it's listening to the shows on Wednesday and Sunday, whether it's uh, you know logging into Cloudcast Basics and starting to learn about that or telling a friend about that. So with that, we're going to wrap up and we will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media. 